Hey everyone, Alex here from WarnOffKeys.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can detect and log ghost pings for your moderation team. So for those who don't know, a ghost ping could be considered whenever you tag someone, let's say I go to tag myself, typically this will be another user, and then you delete that message. The user will still get the notification, however, obviously your message is deleted, and so this is done to annoy another user, and so moderation teams will often want to log those so they can take the appropriate action if someone continues to do this. As a quick demonstration of what we'll be building today, I'm going to go ahead and use this ghost pings channel to log any type of ghost ping that occurs. I can do this with exclamation point ghost ping, and then I can tag the channel. It will then say that the notification channel has been set. I can then try tagging myself and then deleting this message. And now a new embed is sent within here. Here we have the message, the channel it was sent in, and the message author, and then this channel could only be visible to moderators, and then they could take action if this repeatedly occurs. So I'm now in VS Code, and I have my console of choice open at the bottom right here, which is Commander. You can use whatever text editor or whatever console you want, it won't actually matter. I'm going to go ahead and set up my base project here, and if you already have a project you're working on, you can use the YouTube player to skip ahead to the next section. So within my console here, I can initialize a new node project by using npm init-y. This will create a package JSON file for us, and I can now install third-party dependencies. So I can say npm install discord.js.env, wok commands for worn off keys commands. That is the command handler I'll be using for this video. However, if you're familiar with a different command handler, feel free to use that. Either one will work. And finally, we need Mongoose because we'll be using MongoDB for this tutorial. So these are now installing. We can go over here and make a new file, such as index.js. This will be the main entry point for our bot. We can also make a .env file, which will hold important information. And this is important information that we don't want to push to GitHub. So we also want to add in a .git ignore, and we want to add in .env and node underscore modules into here. This will make it so these files and folders are not pushed to any GitHub repositories because we never want to push node modules and we certainly don't want to push our .env file because that will contain our bot's token. We also need a couple folders here, one for our commands, another for our features, which will technically just be a listener, and a final one for our MongoDB schemas or models. We'll come back to these here soon, but first, let's configure our .env file to contain our actual bots token and our MongoDB connection path. So I'm going to set this up where the token will equal, let's just say it was ABC, and the Mongo URI would equal ABC. Of course, you want to add in your own actual values, and I'm going to do that here now. And now that we have those, we can then use the .env third-party dependency that we installed to gain access to those in a secure way. So let's go over to our index file here and let's start setting up our actual bot. And once we have that up and running, we'll then set up one off keys commands and then we'll actually get started on our ghost ping functionality. So I could say const discord.js equals require discord.js. I could then say const wok commands equals require one off keys commands. I can then require dot env dot configure or dot config rather and this will give us access to our dot env properties within the environment variables in this file so we could then use them to log into our bot and to connect to mongodb we could then create our client which is essentially our bot we could say const client equals new discordjs dot client and now we can listen for whenever this client is ready so client dot on ready this will give us a callback and within here, I'm going to simply console log that the client is ready. So console.log, the bot is ready. And then down here, we can actually log into our bot using client.login process.env.token. And this will give us access to the actual bot's token from our .env file, thanks to line three here. So going into my console here, I'm going to run this with nodemon. If you do not have nodemon installed, you can do so with npm install nodemon-g. This will install it globally. You can then run nodemon and it will automatically run your bot. And whenever your source code is saved, for example, right here, it will automatically restart your bot. So it's very convenient for us. 
So now we can go ahead and set up one of keys commands. I'm going to get rid of this console log and I can say new wok commands with the pass in our client and then an object here which will take in some configuration options such as our commands directory. In this case, this is just called commands, which is the name of the folder we created. We also have a feature directory, which will be called features, which again is the folder we created. We can add in show warns, which is false. By default, this is true. And if you're creating an actual public bot, I would suggest you enable this. You can essentially set this to true or just remove this line altogether. It will give you some warnings to ensure you are following best practices within one of keys commands. However, that will require extra work and to keep this video short and to the point, I'm just going to say show warns is false. We can then connect to Mongo. So set Mongo path. We can pass in process.env.mongo URI. I can then save this and our bot will restart. And here it says DB connected. So that means that one of keys commands was able to connect to our Mongo database and everything should be working. So we're going to start off by creating a command that will set the ghost ping channel for a specific guild. So I'm going to make a new file called ghostping.js and within one of keys commands, the name of the file will automatically be the name of the command. Within here, we can export a object. So module exports equals this object. We can say required permissions is an array of strings. In this case, we want administrator. We also want expected args, which is going to be a string. And this will tell the user what arguments are expected in case they insert the wrong number of arguments. In this exact case, we only want a channel tag. We can also specify a minimum number of arguments and a maximum number of arguments. This way it knows if the user entered an incorrect amount, such as no arguments or too many arguments, such as five. We can then specify a callback, which is a function that is ran whenever the command is actually ran. So this will give us an object here and we can destructure the message property from it. This also needs to be asynchronous because we'll be using await within here. And now our first step is to gain access to the mentioned channel and ensure that that actually works. After that, we can save it to the database, but let's start off by just making sure that the mentioned channel exists. So let's destructure mentions and guild from the message object. We can now gain access to a target channel by saying mentions.channels.first. And this will be a null value if there was no mentioned channel. So we can say, if not target channel, we can then return. And of course we want to let the user know what went wrong. So I could say message.reply, please tag a channel. So now we're looking to actually save this information, such as the guild ID and the channel ID to a database, but we need a MongoDB schema for that. We can go inside of our models folder and make a new file. This will be called ghost ping schema js and within here we first have to import mongoose so const mongoose equals require mongoose we then can create our schema so const ghost ping schema equals new mongoose.schema with a capital s we can then pass in an object and within here we can define how our data should be structured basically a blueprint of our data and we're going to have two required strings so instead of specifying required string multiple times, I'm going to create a variable for required string, which will equal an object with a type of string with a capital S and required being true. Now within our schema, I can specify underscore ID as required string. This is going to be our guild ID. So I'll just add in a comment there. If we add in a comma here, we can then specify a channel ID, which is also a required string. Now we can export this. And if you've followed my previous tutorials, this might be slightly different than I used to export things. So first we're going to define a variable that will hold our name. In this case, it'll be a ghost ping channels. Then we can say module.exports equals mongoose.model index of name as an array. That's because whenever a model is created, it is put inside of this array here. And so we can access it instead of creating a new one each time, just in case we are importing this from multiple files. However, if this does not exist yet, then of course we want to create it. So we could say, or mongoose.model as a function call, which will then actually create it. And behind the scenes would put this model inside of the model array. So the next time we import this, it will then use this instance. So for here, we can pass in the name and then the schema, which is ghost ping schema. And now we can go ahead and save this and this should be good to go. 
we can close it and we can import it within our command. So const ghost ping schema equals require. We can go back a directory into the models folder and then access the ghost ping schema. Now within here, we're going to want to find and update any document that matches the guild ID as the primary key. The primary key is underscore ID within MongoDB. And as we noted here, this is going to be the guild ID. So there can only be one ghost ping channel per guild, which makes sense. And that's why we're having it be the primary key. So I can close this and now we can say await, which is why this function needed to be asynchronous ghost ping schema dot find one and update. This will take in three objects as arguments. The first one will be what to search for. In this case, it'll be underscore ID equals guild.id, which is why we needed to destructure it here on line 11. The second one will be what to update it with. So we can specify the ID again, as well as channel ID is going to be target channel.id. Now channel ID has to be spelled exactly like this because that's what we specified here. So whatever spelling you had here on line 10 of your schema, that's the exact spelling you need here as well. Now the third argument can say upsert is true. This means that it is a combination of update and insert. So if this information doesn't exist, for example, if this is the first time we've ran that command within that guild, then it will create it or insert it. However, if it does exist, it will then update it. So if there is a new channel, it will then update the same document. And that's where the update part of upsert comes from. We can now reply to the user. So message.reply ghost ping detection channel set. And our command is good to go. We can now listen for ghost pings, but first let's make sure that our command actually saves our information into the database. So going back over here, I'm going to delete all of these messages just so we know if everything works. Going back to general chat, I can say exclamation point ghost ping. It will then tell us the correct syntax. So ghost ping, and I can tag the ghost ping channel. It will then say ghost ping detection channel set. Now I'm gonna go over to MongoDB and there is no dark theme there. So if you're in a dark room, please watch your eyes. So going over here, I'm already in the ghost pings channels, which was a previously created collection for testing. I can then click on find to refresh all this information. And here we see our document with our guild ID as the primary key and our channel ID set as well. So now that that is working, we can go ahead and close out of these files and we can now work on our feature, which will actually listen for the ghost pings. So a new file here, this can be ghost ping detector.js and we can export a function here. So module.exports. This function will have one parameter, which is a client. Now within here, we want to listen for the message delete event, which will be fired whenever a message is deleted. So we can say client.on message delete and then we'll have access to the message. And within here, we want to gain access to a number of different properties. So we can destructure those from the message, such as the content, the channel it was sent in, the author, the guild, and the mentions. We first want to make sure that this is a valid ghost ping, as well as that the bot does not send this message, because if the bot is tagging someone, perhaps it automatically deletes that mention later on, and we don't want to log all of those. So we can say, if not author, or author.bot or mentions.users.size is exactly equal to zero, we can then return. So if any of these three are the case, we do not want to continue on because we're not interested in that situation. Now what we want to do is gain access to the channel ID for this guild. And one thing we want to ensure is that we don't fetch this on the database every single time a ghost ping is possibly there. Instead, we should check to see if we have that locally cached or locally stored in memory. And if we don't, then we fetch it from the database and then store it in memory. That way it'd be much faster for any ghost ping that is not the first one and it's not going to slow down our bot. So at the top of our file, I can make a new object here called cache. And then I like to add in a comment describing how this data is set up. So here we'll have the guild ID as a key and then the channel ID as a value. Now here I can say let channel ID equals cache index of guild.id. And guild is something we destructured here on line six. But however, this might not exist. If this is the first time that the message has been deleted since the bot has restarted, then cache will just be an empty object. So we need to first check to see if channel ID exists. And if not, 
then fetch it from the database. So if not channel ID result equals await. So this function has to be asynchronous here in this callback. Now we need access to our schema. So I'm going to go ahead and import that. So const ghost ping schema equals require. We can go back to our models folder and access the ghost ping schema. And now here we can say await ghost ping schema dot find by ID. We can then pass in guild ID and we can use this method because our model here suggests that underscore ID, which is our primary key in MongoDB is our guild ID. So we can go ahead and pass in our guild ID and it will understand that this is searching for underscore ID equals guild ID. Now, if this doesn't exist, we don't want to continue. So if not result, we want to return. However, after that, we then want to set our local variable here as channel ID. So channel ID equals result dot channel ID. We also want to set our information in our cache. That way, the next time that a message is deleted for this guild, we can then access the channel ID much faster rather than accessing it from the database. So I can say cache index of guild dot ID equals channel ID. Now, after this if statement, we know that we have access to a channel ID, whether it was originally getting it from the cache or fetching it from the database. So at this stage, we have access to it. So I want to create an embed. I can say const embed equals new message embed, and this will automatically be imported from Discord JS. If it's not automatic for you, go ahead and import it like this on line one. Now I can set a title. So set title, possible ghost ping detected. I can then set a description, which will be template literal of a message, two new lines, and then I can insert in the content, which we destructured up here on line nine. I can then add in a field, so add field of the channel, which will just be the channel. And passing in the channel like this will make it a clickable channel. And this is again, something we destructured on line nine. And then we can pass in the author. So add field message author, we can then add in the author and adding it like this, similar to the channel will make it so the staff members can then click on it to view that profile. Now we can gain access to the actual channel that this should be sent in. So const target channel equals guild dot channels dot cash dot get. We can then pass in the channel ID. And then we can say target channel dot send embed. We might also want to ensure that target channel exists. So if target channel, then we want to send it. Just in case the target channel was deleted, we can now go ahead and save this. Our bot restarts. Going back into Discord, I can now tag a user such as myself and say hello. And then if I delete this, we now see a new message in ghost pings saying that the message is this. Here's the channel that it occurred in and here's the message author. So this is going to be how you create a basic ghost ping detection system. Thanks for watching this Discord JS tutorial. If you want to learn more about Discord JS, consider clicking on the playlist you see on your screen now. If you need help, feel free to leave a comment or ask in the Warnoff Keys Discord, which can be found in the video description.